So right now, before the release of Face Customizer, there's not really a lot of beards in Hero Forge. Like you, you, you have all these ones. Uh, like if if you if you want a big beard, you're pretty good because these ones exist, right? But if you want just a medium beard, the only two options you really have are these two, unless you want the goatee, but that's very niche. Uh, but both of these beards are very round. They don't always do the trick. So what if you wanted like more of a Logan beard, but the mutton chops just aren't doing it because they, I mean, they look ridiculous. So what you would do then is you can enable the wizard's beard, and I know you don't want a beard this big unless you're making an actual wizard or whatever and then you see here on the highest on you go into advanced posing and on the highest you just drag this inwards and then you correct it by dragging it back out like on the lower ones down here so now you hide it again and now you'll see is what we get is this kind of squared beard just from doing that and obviously it blends kind of poorly into the skin here and that's why obviously most models are going to wear clothing so it look a lot better now if we just color this uh, with the hair color and now you see it becomes this kind of squared beard it looks a lot more unkempt than the the previous ones that i showed so like so staying on theme with faces uh there is a decal that a lot of people don't know how it works exactly so this lip decal right i've always had Okay, for using this. What if you wanted color on just one lip over or below the other? Then you could apply the clown lip makeup, and what you do is you just take the normal skin color, you cancel out all of these, and then now you see you can choose this one to have a completely different color. So, for example, you could take just you know black, and now you would have. <laughs> It kind of looks like you have a little bit of a mustache, but uh, you, you you get the point. You can you can now change color between the different lips. So you could have you know one be red, you could have the other be black. You know you 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 can do a lot of cool stuff with this. How you want to apply it is up to you. Now, ever since the floating item glitch, there's always been a lot of people who have like shown how you can make daggers throwing in midair, etc. But the the glitch, you know, it is it is limited to you know people who have pro. So I'll show you how you can do a decent throwing dagger without any of that. So this disciple of death dagger, right? It has it has a sheathed version, and, and the sheathed version of swords generally you hold them at the at the at the hilt, not not the hilt, sorry, the the sheath like this. And basically, all we're gonna do is we can simply if you for example if you first change the grip to sword point so you're holding it loosely and then you simply color what would be the sheath as you would a knife so you color this like the blade and it is a little bit thicker i think but it's going to be barely noticeable and a lot of items in here for just thick anyway so you you color all this normally as you would and then because you're holding this like this now, you know, you, you, you just fling the arm up into the air, you know, you make it look... Side note of this, if you want to make your character look like they are, you know, cutting into their hand as some kind of, like, demonic ritual or whatever, then you can also do that by simply you pose the other arm. So this took me a little longer than I care to admit, uh, but the, the the point is, it's easier to get a good grip with a with a with a custom pose on 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 the hand that's holding the hilt than it is to get a, a custom grip on the hand holding the sword or the actual blade part. So you know, if you want to make it, it look like somebody is committing some kind of weird blood ritual, then this could be a good way to do it. Obviously, it's better if you sell the pose and not just have a guy standing idly like this, but. Now, as I said during the dissection video, I, I wanted to show people how they could do the trick that Amelia used um, to, to create this kind of extra special armor. So I've, I've, I've always said that enabling four or six arms can be a really long, a, a really good way to, 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 you know, get extra detail and to like hang items on top of your character, etc. But sometimes you can use the actual arms themselves as the decoration. So in this case, we're going to take these extra arms and we're going to turn both of them into skeletal arms in this case because I'm just going to mimic exactly what Amelia did for the first example. And then basically what you would want to do is you want to pose these into the character itself. And this is going to take a little while. Now... This obviously is just an example, and uh, you can probably 
fine-tune the posing a little bit better to not have quipping back here, but I'm just showing this quickly for the sake of this video. So this is what uh, Mothi did with Amelia, right? And also, uh, they covered up this this area here by putting a, a mirror here with a tail, and that will also help in this case, because you'd be hiding the wrist. So now we are back on the first tip man, and we're going to enable two arms on him as well, and then on these arms, we're going to... we're now we're going to take these ones. So, instead of Instead of skeletal arms, we have these kind of robotic claw arms. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to apply some extra detail. I'm going to twist the hands because in this case I don't want the hands, I just want the arms. Um, so we twist these forward and then we turn in the hands. And now you can probably see what I'm going for here. And exactly how you want to pose this will depend a lot on what chest piece you have. So in this case I'm using... The, this bulky armor, which uh, it's very it's very clean the way it is, so you don't necessarily want to use it with something like this, and uh, you probably also want these to be even. But the point is, you can add kind of extra detail just with the arms alone. So now there's one way we can make this even more advanced, and that is, let's say we add on a pair of gloves to these extra arms. Now, uh, for example, let, let me see if I can find something decent to use. Now, obviously, this is a little bit messy because, again, I'm only doing this for tip video to show point. But by equipping the the newest gloves that were released, um, let me see if I can find them. The yeah, the empowered telemetry gloves, and clipping them into the body like this. Now I have these two vials here. So what if I was making like an alchemist character? You know, then you could color these two with some kind of green goop, and and it would look like you're carrying around extra vials, uh, which is usually pretty hard to do on a chest because even using clipping arms to hold vials generally doesn't work very well on top of other gear. Now, this next tip might be something that you probably already know about. It's pretty obvious. Uh, it's it's not a hidden feature at all, but I haven't actually gone over this in my other tip videos. So I figured, you know, I gotta do it at some point. So let's say we have a, a normal helmet, you know? Uh, or rather, I'll, I'll go for, I'll go at it from this angle. Let's say you are someone who's making a character, and you you're making like a Warhammer Imperial, and you think, oh, I want the feather and the hat, but my character is supposed to wear a helmet, so you know, you put on an an, an Imperial helmet instead, and you're kind of sad because there's no feather. Now, horns, obviously. Like I said, most people know this, you know, you can be like second breakfast and you can make custom hairstyles all the time with horns And I will probably make my own video uh, dedicated to that at some point, but just as a very small side tip, you know, like Not only can you use these horns to like enhance actual like helmets But you can also just use them for the simplest things like adding a feather for example in this example so by going into head and horns on, on this back one and selecting this feathered horns and applying this to a helmet like this, now I can color this to look like there's a feather in the actual hat. And horns as a way of enhancing helmets, you know, make it, you can make a spiky Sauron crown, you can make a little, a little whatever as long as you have the time and the patience to, to toy around with these things. But... So for the next thing, uh, most people know that if they want like a fur cloak, this is what you go for, right? Um, but something that... I've seen, obviously this is not revolutionary either, but I feel like it is something that a lot of people don't necessarily know how to do, and that is m combining the wolf's head pauldron with the fur cloak to make it look like you're basically wearing like an actual wolf as your shoulder pelt. And the first thing you do is obviously equip these two items, and you know, it's always easier if you reduce the side of the size of the shoulder pelt, then you want to clip it into the, as much as possible. However, what you can do if you really want to go bombastic is you pull the wolf set to the front, uh, and this is like it gets trickier the further away you want it to be from the cloak. So now we have the wolf's head, you know, actually going over the shoulder here and it connects very nicely with the cloak. And really what is going to sell this kind of thing is the the color. So if we color all of this, you know, just gray. So you, you want a bit of monocoloring going around here, you know, you, you want to... So once you're satisfied with the with the color that you have on it, now there's obviously a few issues here, and th th that's these these lines here. And uh, as for how you get them away from the armor, that's just going to have to do with a little bit of post finicking. So what can we do to close this gap? We've already used the shoulder on this side, so we can't put on the rugged fur shoulder. Although you can if you have two molds, but that's another thing. So basically, the best thing we can do is we. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I hate tails as well, but we put on a tail, right? 
Uh, and then generally you don't need too many for this and this, this is going to be a bit finicky but basically you want to post this tail all the way up so you enable a fur tail and then you drag it up here and basically yeah you can kind of see what I'm going for now after you've got it up there that's when you want to start messing around with these ones here now you can see we've already got a little bit of fur here to cover up this main like back line here that's that's the most egregious one, so we can tilt this around. It doesn't have to be super precise, because again, this is fur, right? It's meant to be kind of a little bit messy. So we just keep tilting this downwards, and eventually it will look like it's kind of part of the fur cloak, and by extension, the fur head. So now we've covered up the back here, and we can keep doing this. We can drag tails here, we can drag tails here, and you, you get the point. And the tails are not really going to be visible because they're behind this big cloak anyway, so they're not going to, no, no one's going to see them. So I have shown before how you make like enchanted swords and how you make them glow. So just as an example. So now we have a steel sword here, and we start by making an enchanted, and I have shown this in a previous tip video, so I'll go over this very quickly. You you can make the lower layer glow first if you want a subtle glow, and then if you want a bombastic glow, you can make either the middle layer glow a little bit as well, you see kind of the effect it has, it makes it glow like there's in something inside the metal. Or you can take the high layer instead and make that glow and now you get the... Oh, I'm using the same color over there. But yeah, you, 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 you kind of see what I'm going for here. So I'm going to go for a little bit of a mixture of both. And now the sword is just kind of glowing a bit. If you aren't content that this is enough of a magical sword, you know, you, you, you really want to go over the top with, with the magic, right? You know, you have this character standing here gloriously you know, pointing at someone with a sword, even though he's looking in the other direction. Uh, and yes, you guessed it, it's time to enable more arms. So here we go. Uh, with the next arm, now this one, we want to effectively pose and hide it inside of this other arm. And this will this would be easier with more specific clothing. And you can just copy, copy the numbers to get this precisely, but we're not going to do that in this instant because we... The, this hand is not going to be posed the same after we equip the gear on it anyway, so you will see soon. So for now, let's just get it close enough and something like that will do. So you want a big magical sword, right? The problem generally with the magic on weapons is that it just kind of looks like fire. So if I go into gear on, on this sword, right? Yeah, you, 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 you can kind of see the problem, like, some of them work, like, I think this would look kind of cool if you colored it like green fire or whatever. Um, but, with this extra hand, we are going to equip some magic, some swirly magic to be precise, like, for example, something like this. I mean, green lightning doesn't make too much sense, so let me go for something swirlier. Yeah, something like this. So, we now need to pose this arm... Oops, that was the that was the wrong one. That was the little vile one. I apologize. Uh, oh, now I have the lightning again. Oh no! Oh no! It's all falling apart. It's all falling apart. It's over. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, it's safe. Uh, now this hand here. Once the character is wearing gauntlets and stuff, it becomes a lot easier to cover up. So, for example, <laughs> we could go for the for the giga mega chonker gauntlet uh where is it where are you you cursed bastard uh there it is and now you see from this angle it's barely visible and th there are other ways to hide it uh, i'm sure you can be creative with that but the point is now we have let's just take some of the baseline magic colors that are green now we have a glowing green sword with glowing green magic swirling around it, and obviously if you have pro and you can en enable light, that uh, that goes a long way to uh, to make it even better. But obviously that's not for everyone. Um, for, however, I don't think that's necessary. Like I think this already sells it. You don't need this big glowing green light. So I'm just gonna shut that off for now. Now this guy is wearing a you know a Renaissance helmet, so it only makes sense that he should have a rifle as well. However, he's currently busy, but I will remove the dagger since that's probably one of the easiest tricks to, to replicate anyway. Uh, and basically what I'm gonna be doing here is when you have a character hold a rifle in Hero Forge, so something like this. So oh, yeah, okay, that was the delay. Uh, when you have a character hold a rifle, it's you don't have a lot of options for how you can hold them. In fact, you have even less options than when you're holding a sword. You can't even change like how the hand holds it. 
Uh, and unless you have like an invisible model or a double model, you're gonna have a hard time like getting a different pose on, on how you hold a gun. Which is why we are gonna put a gun on his side. So this side, the side option here actually allows for gear that's absolutely huge, like even some of the XL gear. So for example, if we put this plain rifle here, the, the Winchester, and now we edit this and we pull this forward. Uh, thank you to uh, Joe in my Discord for suggesting this trick actually. This is gonna mess a little bit with the shoulder positioning but, that, but that's fine. So basically now we have here a rifle which if we make the character's arm look like it's resting against the rifle like this. So yeah, there you go. Now, now it looks like this character is just kind of carrying the rifle against his hip and exactly how you want to pose this, you know, you, you, you can edit this pretty damn freely. Um, but this is just one example, you know, the, the rifle doesn't have to be in the hand. And, and, and as well, this doesn't have to be guns only, you know. It might be most applicable with rifles, but you can do this with any big item against the side gear here. Let's let, let's imagine that this, this shoulder cloak... Uh, like we, we, we don't care about this little extra bit of detail here with the tail. Uh, what we want is we want to be able to use the tail to hold an item. So we're going to pull this back and we're going to swap it to a tail that can hold items. So we'll go to something really basic like the straight tail. Now we have uh, an amalgamation of posing here. And this guy has a rifle, he has a throwing dagger, he has vials, he has a feather hat, he has a magical super sword. But what I feel he needs is a shoulder cannon on his other shoulder. That will complete him. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, this works with a lot of items. But the one I'm going to show you now is one of the easier ones. Uh, and it's kind of a, like an introduction into tail holding. So we go into items and we in gear and on, to, on the tail. And we search for dynamite. Now this is the dynamite bundle is pretty new. And now, now comes the posing part. I'll speed this up. And there we go, with no clipping outside of the cloak, we, we now have what essentially looks like a little, uh, some kind of weird sci-fi cannon up here. And obviously if we, if we color this with, you know, we can duplicate this uh, green color here. And if we tone down this and this and just make the low layer red. Yeah, now, now you see where we kind of have what looks like some weird creepy laser cannon just sitting on his shoulder. And this works a lot better on sci-fi characters. You know, you can sell this a lot more if you also have a sci-fi actual shoulder piece underneath here. But, I mean, the thing about the gear within, in the extra hands and the tails is that you can do, you can essentially duplicate certain things. You know, you could have a hand holding a shield here, like a little shield as a shoulder pad, and then also have another shoulder pad underneath it. You know, the, like it, it, it lets the layering... It allows you to go kind of crazy with the layering, even if you only have access to one model. And believe me, if you have access to two models, then you can really go crazy. But let's imagine for a moment that this character is not wearing a fur cloak, right? Instead of a fur cloak, we go to something like this cloak. Let's say you are a really big fan of, like, Resident Evil 4, and you, <laughs> all you want, really, is, like, that weirdly, you know, merchant's cloak that's hanging out. And very conveniently, we have this character's arm already hanging out, so... After we pull, put on like a big like broad cloak like this one, we go into uh, wings and we scroll down and there's a lot of ones that kind of work with connecting like making uh, cloaks into wings is probably an, it's not a tip I should do at some point. But for now I'm just going to enable one wing and do this open demon wing and I'm going to twist this downwards like this and place it right here-ish. And now it will, once I color this in and I just make it kind of pure black, the outlines of it are going to be less obvious. And now it kind of looks like it's part of the cloak that I'm just dragging, that this character is dragging open when he's like lifting his arm. And you know, you can do a very cool like, what are you selling, what are you buying pose with this. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then please press like. If you dislike the video, then by all means press dislike. And if you have any tips that you think I should go over in a future video, then by all means drop them in the comment below and I will consider them for the next tip video I make.